Preface of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Larry Wilson. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Preface. The English, to their loss, are not a soup-eating nation, and for the most part those of us that do care for soup are obstinately conservative in our tastes. The ordinary restaurant thinks it has done its duty when oxtail, mock turtle, and tomato soup have been included in the bill of fare. Yet the range of soups is very wide, as the hundred pages of recipes, by no means exhaustive, that follow will show and that they may lead some readers to add to the elasticity of the domestic menu is the ambition of the compiler all are good few are expensive and none exotic i should like it to be understood also that the directions need not be considered absolutely final every recipe can be made the basis of a mild experiment by slight differences in the ingredients or quantities two final remarks soup never ought to be served in large quantities our tendency in england when we take it is to take too much and in the preparation of it the first and last word is simmer end of preface section two of the soup and sauce book this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. General Remarks on Stock Stock is the basis of all soups, except those which the French call potage maigre, which have no meat in them. For clear soups, the stock is a good consomme, which must be made absolutely clear and without any fat. For thick white soups, chicken or veal stock is used for brown thick soups a dark stock for purees white or brown stock according to their color stock will keep for several days in winter for a week a teaspoonful of liebig's extract of meat will greatly improve the flavor of a poor stock utensils of special utensils for making soup porcelain lined saucepans are the most satisfactory and should always be used if possible there is nothing so good or clean as the large French pot au feu, which can be bought in Soho. Earthenware saucepans are also good. It saves trouble when straining soup to have a large deep bowl or jar, and a colander or wire sieve which fits perfectly into it. Wooden or silver spoons should be used. The fire. In making stock, it is most important to have a steady fire, which need not be interfered with so that an even temperature may be kept stock should be allowed to come slowly to the boil and then be set back to simmer so gently that bubbles rise from one side only of the pot to prepare fresh meat for stock look over the meat carefully cut away any part which is in the slightest degree tainted wipe the meat over with a clean cloth that has been dipped in cold water and wrung out cut the meat off the bones cut into small pieces break the bones if there is any marrow take it out and spread it on the bottom of the pot that is to be used vegetables in hot weather it is better to make stock without vegetables as they often turn it sour see that all vegetables used are perfectly clean cut them in two or three pieces if to be used for flavoring stock if they are to be served with the soup cut them regularly and carefully to the size required and do not cook them in the soup for more than half an hour or their flavor will be impaired vegetables should be added in the proportion of about one carrot one onion or leek half a turnip a piece of celery to every quart of stock in the onion can be stuck a clove herbs to flavor stock with herbs it is best to use a bouquet i e a small bunch of mixed herbs a sprig or leaf each of sage thyme marjoram bay and parsley this can be easily taken out of the soups before serving. If ground herbs are used, add about a teaspoonful of mixed herbs to every quart of stock. Seasoning. 
it is not necessary to season the original stock in making it into different soups the seasoning is of course a matter of taste but roughly speaking to each quart may be put one small teaspoonful of salt two peppercorns or half a salt spoon of ground pepper and one clove to remove fat from stock every particle of fat must be removed from the stock from which clear soups are to be made with stock which is to be thickened it is not so necessary to be particular as the flour used for the purpose will absorb a good deal of fat with broths which should be particularly nourishing it is merely a matter of taste how much fat is removed to remove fat from stock it is best to let it first become quite cold the fat will then become quite solid and can easily be removed with a knife to remove the small particles which may still be left dip a cloth in hot water wring it out and pass it over the stock it will absorb all the fat if there is not time to allow the stock to cool first a great deal of fat can be absorbed by tissue paper which should be laid over it or it can be strained two or three times through cloths which have been put in very cold water and wrung out to clarify stock for clear soups the addition of a little cold water to boiling stock will cause the scum to rise quickly this can be done several times and if thoroughly strained the stock should be clear to clarify soup more effectually although the flavor is not improved by doing so the white and shell of an egg are used to every quart of stock and it must be cold add the white and broken shell of an egg beat together put in the pot stir continually until hot then let it boil untouched for about ten minutes set back on the oven throw in half a cup of cold water and allow it to stand for ten minutes place a colander over the bowl and when you are ready to strain the soup put over the colander a napkin which has been dipped in very hot water and then wrung out let it drain through slowly without any pressure shifting the napkin gently if any part becomes clogged straining it is well as i have said to have a large deep bowl with a colander or strainer that fits tightly into it put a napkin or muslin over the colander and take the soup out of the saucepan with a cup or ladle let it drain about a quarter of an hour without any pressure the napkins and muslin used for straining may be old but must be fine and absolutely clean and sweet End of section two. Section three of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Stock. Common stock. One pound shin of beef one quart cold water, two or three vegetables. Cut the meat up into small pieces, put it in a saucepan, and add the water. Allow it to stand for half an hour, then put it on the fire. Let it come to the boil slowly, simmer for two hours, strain. Brown soup stock. Three pounds shin of beef, one pound bones, three quarts cold water, two carrots, one turnip, two stalks of celery, three onions, three cloves, bouquet of herbs. Cut the meat into small pieces, break the bones, put three ounces of butter in a saucepan. When melted, add it to one-third of the meat and the onions sliced. Stew gently until a rich brown. Put with the rest of the meat, bones, etc. in a saucepan. Cover with water, bring to the boil, simmer four hours, strain clear brown stock, two pounds shin of beef, one pound knuckles of veal, the carcass and bones of a fowl, three pints of water, one carrot, one onion with a clove stuck in it, one stick of celery, one piece of parsley, a small bouquet of herbs. Put the bones at the bottom of a saucepan, place the meat, which should be cut up in small pieces, upon them, cover with cold water. Leave the saucepan uncovered. Bring to the boil very slowly. When it boils, throw in a half cup of cold water. This will cause the scum to rise. Skim. Bring to the boil again. Throw in a little more cold water. 
skim, bring to the boil. Add the vegetables, set back on the fire, and allow it to simmer gently for three or four hours. Strain through a napkin into a bowl and allow it to cool. If required, the soup can be further clarified. Page 4. Consumé. One pound shin of beef, one pound veal, the bones and carcasses of fowls or game, two quarts of stock, vegetables, the white of an egg. Cut away all fat from the meat, chop it up finely, put the white of an egg in a basin, add it to the chopped meat, mix them well together with a silver spoon. Stir in a glass of cold water, put the meat into a large saucepan, add vegetables, the bones and carcasses of birds. Cover with two quarts of good stock, bring to the boil, stirring occasionally to prevent the meat from sticking to the saucepan. When it boils, set back to simmer gently for three hours. Dip a napkin in hot water, wring it out, and strain the stock through it into a basin. Chicken Stock One old fowl, one quart water, one carrot, one stick of celery, one small onion. Put the fowl and vegetables into a stew pan, adding the bones or carcass of another fowl if possible. Cover with cold water or wheat clear stock. Let it boil up slowly and simmer for three hours. Skim, pass the stock through a napkin, and set aside to cool. Veal stock. One pound knuckle of veal, chicken bones or carcasses, one quart of water, vegetables, one blade of mace, one clove. Cut up the veal, break the bones, add vegetables and spice, cover with the water, bring slowly to the boil, simmer for two or three hours, strain. Economical stock for thick soups, purees, etc. An excellent, although not very clear stock, can be made from odds and ends of cooked meat and bones. For this purpose, there should be an enameled pot with a lightly fitting lid, and it should practically be kept in use continually. Spread the bottom of the pot with butter or marrow. Pack in pieces of meat, bone, gristle, the carcasses of birds, two or three vegetables cut up in small pieces, two cloves, and a bouquet of herbs. Cover the meat, etc., with cold water, put on the lid, Heat slowly, and when it boils, set back to simmer for four or five hours. In preparing meat for this stock, look it over carefully. Reject any piece which is not perfectly good. Also, all stuffing, skin, smoked or burnt pieces. A little beef fat can always be retained, but mutton fat should not be used as it is rank in flavor. Scrape the meat off the bones and break the bones in small pieces. A slice or two of lean ham... The gravy saved from any kind of roast, a little fresh meat finely chopped, will greatly improve this stock. End of section 3, read by Bryce Cries, Youngstown. Section 4 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Clear Soups. General Remarks on Soups. Utensils and Fire. The remarks concerning the utensils and fire for making stock apply also to the preparation of soups from stock. To thicken soups with flour only. Mix flour or corn flour with a little cold water, milk, or stock until perfectly smooth. Add more water or milk. Strain. Pour slowly into the soup, which should be nearly boiling. Let it come to a boil. Continue boiling for 10 minutes, stirring all the time, or it will taste of flour. About one tablespoon of flour should be used to thicken each quart of stock. To thicken soups with butter and flour. Roux. Melt some butter, skim it till quite clear, pour it into an earthenware saucepan, and add to it its weight in flour. Work with a wooden spoon until perfectly smooth. Stir over a fire for a few minutes, then put it in a moderate oven. Stir occasionally and be very particular that it does not color or burn. It should be left in the oven from 30 to 45 minutes. 
this thickening which is called white roux is used for white soups brown roux for brown soups is made in the same way but is left in the oven until slightly colored it will keep for some time when adding roux to soups it is best first to melt it in a small saucepan to thin it with a little hot stock and then to add it gradually to the soups if the roux has not been prepared beforehand the quantity required can be made in a short time by cooking the flour and butter together in a saucepan for five minutes for white roux or longer for brown roux it should be stirred all the time a heaping tablespoon or more of roux should be added to every quart of soup to be thickened corn flour and roux the advantage of roux over corn flour is that the flour used in preparing the roux having been already cooked it is not necessary to continue boiling the soups to which it is added whereas corn flour being raw the soups thickened by it must be boiled for some little time to color soups the color of soups can be deepened by using caramel coloring or glaze which will also add to their flavor caramel coloring put half a pound of brown or white sugar in an iron saucepan with a tablespoonful of water stir over a very gentle fire until it turns a deep rich brown color add half a pint of boiling water let it simmer very gently for twenty minutes allow it to get cold put it into bottles and cork this makes an excellent and tasteless coloring but it must be carefully made the rich brown color comes from slow and gentle cooking if it is burnt and black it is useless add to the soup a few minutes only before serving glaze glaze is made by boiling down good stock until it is of a very thick and gluey consistency put a quart of rich stock into a saucepan over a good fire leave it uncovered and boil it until it is reduced to half a pint let it cool put it in a jar or bottle cover closely and keep in a cool place this will keep for two or three weeks adding vegetables and meat to soups whenever vegetables or meats have to be passed through a sieve or tammy it will be found easier to do so if the pulp is kept continually well moistened with stock or milk according to the soup which is being made wine and ketchup wine and ketchup should always be added as late as possible as they lose in flavor by being boiled clear soups brunoise three pints strong consomme one carrot one turnip one leek one onion one stick of celery one small teacupful freshly cooked peas one small teacupful freshly cooked asparagus points one small teacupful freshly cooked french beans cut the carrot turnip leek onion and celery into small dice shaped pieces using the red outer part of the carrot only fry them in butter until a light brown add them to the consomme and after it has come to the boil simmer gently until the vegetables are perfectly tender skim from time to time season add the cooked peas beans and asparagus points the beans should be cut into diamond shaped pieces consomme with poached eggs six eggs one quart consomme break the eggs carefully into boiling water taking care that they do not run into each other cook until firmly set but not hard take them out put them on a dish and trim neatly put them in a soup tureen and gently pour over them the hot consomme finely chopped and cooked vegetables may be added to the consomme croute au pot one quart clear brown stock one quarter of a white cabbage one carrot one half a turnip a little celery two thin slices of bread cut the celery carrot and turnip into small equal pieces cut up the heart of the cabbage and cook separately in salted water put the vegetables in a saucepan pour the stock over them simmer until tender add the cabbage season simmer for a few minutes toast the bread cut it into several pieces put them in a soup tureen pour the vegetables and stock over them serve grated parmesan can be served with this soup croute au pot gratiné one quart clear brown stock one teacup of mixed cooked vegetables cut in small pieces 
four small dinner rolls. Take out the crumb from the inside of three or four rolls. Put the crust in an earthenware saucepan and cover with a little clear brown stock. Let them simmer over a gentle fire until they have absorbed all the stock. Then put them in the oven until they are crisp, being very careful that they do not burn. Place them in a soup tureen with the cooked vegetables. Pour the well-seasoned boiling stock over them. Game Soup One calf's foot, one or two birds, game, or the carcasses and bones of several. One slice lean ham, two carrots, one onion, one piece of celery, one sprig parsley, one bay leaf, thyme, two cloves, one blade of mace, two quarts of water, one glass of sherry. Clean and cut up the calf's foot. Put in a stew pan with one or two whole birds, game, or the carcasses and bones of several, a small piece of lean ham, the vegetables, herbs, etc. Cover with two quarts of water, bring to the boil, skim, simmer for three hours, season, strain. When cold, clarify with white of egg. Before serving, add a glass of sherry and two dozen small canals of game. Imperial Soup one quart clear consomme for custard one gill consomme four yolks of eggs nutmeg salt beat the yolks in a basin add a little salt and nutmeg stir in the consomme strain through a fine hair sieve into a shallow plain mold put it into a pan of boiling water and steam until it sets turn out carefully onto a wet napkin cut into fancy or square shapes Half of the mixture can, if wished, be colored green with spinach coloring. Place the custards carefully in a tureen and pour the hot consomme over them. Julienne. Two large carrots, one turnip, one piece of celery, one small onion, one quarter white cabbage, one lettuce, a little sorrel, one quart consomme, two ounces butter. Cut all the vegetables into thin shreds of equal length, about one inch. Use the red outer part of the carrots only and the hearts of the lettuce and cabbage. Wash the sorrel and cabbage separately and set aside. Put two ounces of butter and a salt spoon of powdered sugar in a saucepan. Add to it all the vegetables except the cabbage and sorrel. Let them turn a fine yellow, but be careful not to burn. Add the consomme, bring to the boil, drain, season. Set back to simmer until the vegetables are tender. Then add the cabbage and sorrel, a leaf of tarragon and chervil. Simmer another ten minutes and serve. Macaroni soup. One quart stock, one half pint macaroni. Cook the macaroni in boiling salted water half an hour. Drain. Pour cold water through the macaroni to prevent it sticking together. Put the sticks on a board and cut it, either very finely to make rings or in half inch pieces. Bring stock to the boil, add the macaroni, season. Spring soup. Two carrots, one turnip, one half a head of celery, ten small onions, one teacup of cauliflower cut into little branches, heart of a small white cabbage lettuce, a small handful of sorrel, a leaf of chervil and of tarragon, one quarter pint peas, one quarter pint asparagus points, one quarter pint croutons, one quart consomme cut the carrots and turnip into small rounds or olive shaped pieces add them with the chopped up celery whole onions and cauliflower to a quart of consomme or chicken stock bring it to the boil simmer for half an hour stamp the sorrel and lettuce into small round pieces add them with a leaf of chervil and of tarragon and a teaspoon of sugar to the soup when all the vegetables are tender Add a quarter of a pint of young peas and the same quantity of asparagus heads, both freshly cooked. Serve with croutons. Vermicelli. One quarter pound vermicelli, one quart consomme. Break up the vermicelli in small pieces. Put it in cold water. Bring it to the boil and boil it for four minutes. Drain it, pour cold water through it. Put it in a saucepan with the consomme which should be very clear, strong, and well seasoned. Let it boil up, skim, simmer until the vermicelli is tender. Serve with grated Parmesan in a separate dish. Other clear soups. 
Clear soups can also be served with Italian paste, force meat balls, canals, rice, etc. End of section four. Section five of the soup and sauce book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Thick Soups. Brown Soup. The water in which a joint of mutton has been boiled. One carrot. One onion. One turnip. One head of celery. One half pint cooked young peas. Brown roux. One ounce of butter. One teaspoonful of Liebig's extract of meat. One lump sugar. Boil down the water to one quart. Allow it to cool. Remove the fat carefully. Cut the vegetables into small equal pieces. Fry them a rich brown in one ounce of butter. Put the stock on the fire again. Add the vegetables and sugar. Simmer until they are tender. Add the peas. Simmer for a quarter of an hour. Thicken with brown roux. See page 12. Simmer another 15 minutes. A few minutes before serving, add a little caramel coloring, see page 13, and the Liebig's extract. Cream of pearl barley. One half pound pearl barley, one quart chicken stock, one gill cream. Wash the barley thoroughly, throw it into boiling water and let it boil quickly for 10 minutes. Drain it, pour cold water through it to separate the barley. Put the stock in a saucepan. Add the barley to it. Simmer for four hours or until the barley is very tender. Set aside a little of the barley to add whole to the stock. Put the rest through a tamary. Add it to the stock with the whole barley. Season. Scald a gill of cream. Add to the soup. If preferred, the barley may be cooked separately in water. Cream of rice. One fourth pound Carolina rice. One quart chicken stock. One gill cream, one teaspoon of butter. Wash the rice and boil it several minutes in water. Drain, add it to the stock. Simmer until the rice is tender. Rub through a tamri. Just before serving, mix with the soup of a gill of cream and a teaspoonful of butter. A little whole rice which has been boiled in chicken broth can be added to the soup, or it can be served with a dozen small canals of chicken. See page 105. Giblet soup. One set of giblets, one whole onion, one chopped onion, grated rind of the third of a lemon, a few drops of lemon juice, one ounce butter, one tablespoon flour, one glass white wine, small bouquet of herbs, two cloves, one quart of stock. Scald and cut in pieces a set of giblets, Put in a saucepan with a quart of good stock, a whole onion stuck with two cloves, and a lemon rind. Simmer until the giblets are very tender. Strain off the stock. Make a brown roux of the butter and flour. See page 12. Add it to the stock with the herbs and an onion chopped fine. Boil hard for 10 minutes. Strain through a fine sieve. Add a glass of white wine. Seasoned with cayenne, salt, and a few drops of lemon juice. Hare soup. A large fresh hare, two onions, one carrot, two pieces of celery, bouquet of herbs, four cloves, four peppercorns, cayenne, one glass of port, two quarts of cold water. Cut a perfectly fresh hare into pieces, being careful to save all the blood. Let the pieces soak in two quarts of cold water in a stew pan for an hour. Add the blood and set on the fire. Bring to the boil, stirring and skimming frequently. Add the vegetables, herbs, spices, and peppercorns. Simmer gently for two or three hours. Strain off the liquid. Cut the meat from the bones. Set aside some of the best to be cut into small pieces. Pound the rest in a mortar and put through a tamri. See page 60. Return to the saucepan with the stock. When it boils, season highly, add a glass of port wine, 
and the small pieces of hair which have been reserved serve. Forced meatballs, see page 104, may be added also. Leftover soup. Bones and trimmings of a six pound roast of beef, one mutton chop, one half pound fresh gravy beef, two quarts cold water, two cloves, two peppercorns, one baked apple, one half cup of cold boiled onions, two pieces of celery, bouquet of herbs, one cup cooked tomato or one cup boiled macaroni. Cut up the meat, break the bones, put in a stew pan with the cold water, vegetables, spices and apple. Bring to the boil, simmer for two or three hours. Strain, set aside to cool, remove fat, when required heat to boiling point, season, add the tomato or macaroni. Mock turtle, one calf's head, one old fowl, partly roasted, one knuckle of veal, three slices raw ham, two quarts of stock, carrots, celery, green onions, one half pound mushrooms, four shallots, a large bouquet of parsley, thyme, bay leaf, sweet basil, and marjoram, eight cloves, two blades of mace, one half pint sherry, teaspoonful lemon juice, white roux. Scald the calf's head, bone it. Do this by making a sharp incision down to the bone from the back of the head to the nose and peeling back the flesh on each side with a knife. Put the head in a saucepan, cover it with cold water. Boil it for a quarter of an hour, skimming from time to time. Then take it out and put it in a basin full of cold water. Butter the bottom of a large stock pot. Put in it an old fowl partly roasted, of which the breast is kept back for force meat balls, a knuckle of veal, the ham, and two quarts of good stock. Boil quickly until the stock is reduced to one pint. Set back to simmer gently for half an hour. Fill up the stock pot with water. Take the head out of the water. Pare away any rough parts in the mouth. Put in the stock pot. Bring to the boil. Skim thoroughly. Add the vegetables, spices, and bouquet. Simmer gently until the head is tender. Remove the head. Strain the broth. When the meat is cool, cut it up into small squares, reserving a little for forced meatballs. Thicken the stock with light-colored roux, page 12. Let it boil up. Skim off the butter that comes to the surface. Add half a pint of sherry. Season with cayenne. Add a teaspoonful of lemon juice and the pieces of calf's head. Boil 10 minutes. Add two or three dozen forced meatballs. See page 104. Mulligatawny. Two chickens or two rabbits. Two quarts veal stock. Two carrots. Four onions. One head of celery and two pieces of celery. A bouquet of herbs and parsley. Two tablespoons flour. One tablespoon curry powder, one tablespoon curry paste, one half pound putna rice, one fourth pound butter. Cut up the chickens or rabbits into small pieces. Put them in a saucepan with a quart of good veal stock and a carrot, turnip, apple, parsley, and a bouquet of herbs. Bring to the boil and simmer gently until the meat is tender, stirring from time to time. Strain off the stock. Cut the meat from the bones and set aside to cool. Fry three onions, a carrot, and a head of celery, all finely sliced, very slowly in a quarter of a pound of butter until they are a rich golden brown. Add two tablespoons of flour. Stir in till smooth. Add a tablespoon of curry powder and the same quantity of curry paste. Season with cayenne and salt. Add the vegetables to the stock and add more veal stock if required. Let it boil up, skim, simmer half an hour very gently. Put through a tamry, pour over the meat of the chickens or rabbits, which should be cut into neat pieces. Heat gently and simmer for another 10 minutes. If desired, half a pint of scalded cream can be added just before serving. Serve with plain boiled putna rice. See page 106. Oxtail soup. One oxtail, 
two quarts water or stock, one onion, two carrots, two ounces butter, one head of celery, two cloves, two peppercorns, blade of mace, a lump of sugar, one half a pint of mixed parboiled vegetables. Wash the oxtail and cut it into joints. Lay these in cold water for two hours. Slice finely a large onion and two carrots. Melt two ounces of butter in a saucepan and fry the onion and carrots in it. When they are slightly browned, add the oxtail. Brown it a little. Put the vegetables and oxtail in a stock pot. Add the celery finely cut up. Cover with two quarts of water or beef stock. Add the spice and seasoning. Bring to the boil. Skim thoroughly. Simmer until the meat separates from the bone and the gristle is quite soft. Strain through a napkin. Cut the best of the meat into pieces. Put them into a stew pan. Add the strained stock, half a pint of mixed parboiled vegetables cut in small rounds or olive shaped, a lump of sugar and more pepper if required. Heat and simmer until vegetables are tender. The vegetables should be shaped with a vegetable cutter and are best parboiled in a little stock. Oxtail soup may be thickened by a puree of carrots, turnips, peas, or lentils. The puree is made by boiling whichever vegetable is required until very tender and pressing it through a sieve or tamry. Add it to the strained stock and mix well. Venison soup. One and one half pounds venison, one half pound salt pork or raw ham, one onion, one half a head of celery, one blade of mace, six peppercorns, brown roux, one tablespoon Worcester sauce, one tablespoon mushroom ketchup, one glass Madeira or brown sherry. Cut up the meat and vegetables, put them in a stew pan, add just enough water to cover them, stew them slowly with the lid on for an hour, add nearly a quart of boiling water and mace and peppercorns, simmer for two hours, strain, season, thicken with brown roux, one tablespoon butter, one tablespoon flour, see page 12. Add the Worcester sauce, mushroom, ketchup, and wine. End of section 5, read by Bryce Cries, Youngstown. Section 6 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas Thickened Vegetable Soups Made with Stock Artichoke Soup 4 artichokes, 2 ounces butter, 1 quart white stock, 1 cup cream or milk, 1 teaspoon sugar. Wash and peel the artichokes. Cut them in slices, put the butter in a saucepan. Melt it, add the artichokes. Allow them to simmer until tender, but be careful not to let them brown. Add the boiling stock and a teaspoon of sugar. Simmer for half an hour. Rub through a tammy. Heat again. Season. At the last minute, add a cup of boiling cream or milk. Asparagus soup. One pound veal, one quart water, one large bundle of asparagus, one tablespoon flour, one gill of cream. Cut off the stalks of the asparagus. Put them in a stew pan with the veal, which should be cut up, and water. Bring to the boil, simmer for three hours, strain off the broth, add the asparagus heads, season, boil for 20 minutes, thicken with a tablespoon of corn flour rubbed smooth in a gill of cream, boil for 10 minutes, serve with croutons. Cauliflower soup, one quart white stock, one tablespoon chopped onion, one pint milk or cream, one boiled cauliflower. Boil the milk or cream with the onion, heat the stock. Rub half the cauliflower through a sieve, add it to the stock, add the boiling milk, which has been strained off the onions. Season, add tablespoonful butter in small pieces and the rest of the cauliflower cut in small branches. If wished, the soup can be slightly thickened with a tablespoon of white roux. Celery soup, one quart white stock, four heads of celery, two tablespoons white roux, one gill cream. Put three heads of celery into the stock and boil until very tender. Strain off the soup and return to the saucepan. 
add the fourth head of celery finely cut simmer till tender thicken with the white roux scald a gill of cream and add to the soup season and serve chestnut soup two pounds chestnuts one pint consomme one pint cream boil the chestnuts until tender remove shells and peel them whole save ten whole rub all the rest through a fine sieve heat the consomme scald the cream mix together season with salt and pepper add the chestnuts stir until well mixed but do not allow the soup to boil just before serving cut up the ten chestnuts into small pieces and add to the soup green pea soup one quart water one pound shin of beef one quart young green peas one tablespoon flour one sprig of mint wash and boil the empty pea pods with a piece of mint in a quart of salted water for about an hour skim strain off the pods add them to the meat cut in small pieces in a saucepan simmer gently for an hour and a half strain off the stock season add the shelled peas to it boil gently for twenty minutes add the flour mixed smooth with a little of the stock and the parsley boil for ten minutes mushroom soup one pound fresh small mushrooms one pint rich milk or cream one pint consomme one tablespoon flour one tablespoon butter set aside twelve mushrooms cut them in half cook separately chop the rest into small pieces and fry in the butter adding a tablespoonful of flour and mixing until perfectly smooth put in a stew pan and add the scalded milk or cream and the boiling consomme simmer for quarter of an hour season rub through a sieve strain through muslin heat again very gently add to the cooked mushrooms and do not allow it to boil polish soup one beetroot two onions one quart brown stock one glass red wine one cup thick cream cut up the beetroot and onion in small pieces put them in a saucepan and pour over them the stock which should be very rich and of a good dark color bring to a boil and simmer for an hour and a half put through a tammy put back on the fire add the wine season with salt pepper and cayenne heat well but do not allow it to boil just before serving add the cream which should be scalded or the cream may be served separately in which case it should be cold tomato soup one quart of stock one teaspoonful sugar one half a tin of tomatoes one onion one teaspoonful butter slice the onion fry it in the butter add it to the tomatoes heat them in a saucepan and allow them to simmer for fifteen minutes rub through a sieve put to the stock season and add a lump of sugar heat serve with croutons end of section six section seven of the soup and sauce book this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org read by betty b the soup and sauce book by elizabeth douglas vegetable soups made without stock artichoke soup four artichokes one pint water one pint milk one onion boil the artichokes in a pint of water mash them press them through a sieve and mix them again with the water in which they were boiled boil an onion in the milk remove the onion add the milk to the artichokes bring to the boil season serve with croutons carrot soup three large carrots one onion one quart cold water two ounces of butter one half a pint milk or cream one tablespoon flour one teaspoon powdered sugar scrape the carrots and slice them finely rejecting the hard yellow inside put them in a saucepan with a quart of cold water simmer gently for three quarters of an hour slice the onion and fry it a light brown in the butter add it to the carrots and put all through a fine sieve put the puree into a saucepan with the water in which the carrots were cooked thicken with the flour stir continually allow it to boil for five minutes season add a teaspoonful powdered sugar just before serving add half a pint of scalded milk or cream celery cream one head celery one pint water one pint milk or cream 
one tablespoon chopped onion two tablespoons white roux wash the celery cut it into small pieces throw it into one pint boiling salted water boil till very tender put through a sieve and return to the water in which it was cooked boil the milk with the onion strain add the milk to the celery bring to a boil again stir in the white roux season boil five minutes strain into soup tureen mock bisque one half tin of tomatoes one quart milk two ounces butter one tablespoon white roux one half salt spoon carbonate of soda stew the tomatoes until very soft add the carbonate of soda and sugar put through a fine sieve set in a small saucepan on the fire to keep hot heat the milk thicken it with white roux flour and butter let it boil a few minutes stirring constantly season add the tomatoes and serve immediately the tomatoes should not be added until actually ready to serve portuguese soup three tomatoes one spanish onion a small bunch of herbs two large slices of stale bread one ounce grated cheese parmesan one quart hot water one ounce butter cut up the tomatoes and onions fry a light brown in butter put them in a stew pan and cover with a quart of hot water let it boil and then stand aside to simmer for half an hour strain off the liquid rub the vegetables through a coarse sieve return to the fire season and make very hot break up the bread and put it in the bottom of a hot soup tureen sprinkle a little of the grated cheese upon it pour the soup over it sprinkle the rest of the cheese on the soup potato cream one pint milk one gill cream two potatoes one onion one teacup cooked french beans one dessert spoonful chopped cooked carrot one teaspoon liebig's extract one small tablespoon white roux boil the potatoes and onion put them through a sieve add them to the milk which should be boiling add the white roux the liebig diluted with a little water and seasoning stir for a minute or two cut the french beans into small pieces add them and the very finely chopped carrot to the soup stir in the scalded cream potato soup three potatoes one quart milk one tablespoon chopped onion a little celery or one half a teaspoon celery salt one tablespoon white roux one tablespoon chopped parsley peel the potatoes soak them in cold water for half an hour cook them in boiling water until soft drain off the water put the potatoes through a sieve boil the milk with the onion and celery or celery salt strain add to the potatoes stir in the white roux season boil for five minutes add the parsley sorrel soup one handful of sorrel one pint of water one teacup cream or milk bread wash and prepare a handful of sorrel put it in a saucepan with the butter and a pint of water season boil gently for a quarter of an hour add a little cream or milk put several very thin slices of bread in the soup tureen and pour the soup over them rice or tapioca can be added to the soup summer soup one cucumber two cabbage lettuces one onion small handful of spinach a piece of mint a pint of shelled peas two ounces butter a slice of ham wash the lettuces and cut them up cut up the cucumber and onion put them with half a pint of peas the mint ham and butter into a stew pan cover with a little more than a quart of cold water bring to a boil and then simmer gently for three hours strain off the liquid pass the vegetables through a sieve add to the liquid set on the fire again season add half a pint of green peas which have already been boiled tomato soup one tin of tomatoes one pint boiling water one tablespoon sugar four cloves two peppercorns one tablespoon butter one tablespoon flour one tablespoon chopped onion one tablespoon parsley put the tomatoes water sugar cloves and peppercorns in a porcelain lined sauce pot simmer for half an hour fry the onions and parsley in the butter being careful not to burn add the flour to them mix smooth add them to the tomatoes simmer for ten minutes strain through a fine sieve season serve with rice or croutons end of section seven
Section number eight of the Soup and Sauce book. This is a LibriVox recording. All of the LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Yasna Jackson. The Soup and Sauce book by Elizabeth Douglas. Soups thickened with a liaison of cream and yolk of egg. In thickening soups with a liaison of cream or milk and yolk of egg, the eggs must first be well beaten, then the cream should be added to them and thoroughly mixed. When this is done, take a teacup of hot stock and mix it slowly with the liaison. Strain it all through a fine sieve or muslin and add gradually to the soup, which must on no account be allowed to boil after the liaison is added although it should be stirred over a gentle fire until it thickens. In thickening soups with eggs only, beat the required number of eggs, add a little warm stock to them, strain and add gradually to the soup. Brown bread soup. One quart stock, four or five small slices of brown bread, half a head of celery, one carrot, four tablespoons glaze, four yolks of eggs, one gill sour cream. Toast the brown bread, add it with the sliced celery and carrot to a rich stock from which all the fat has not been removed. Bring to a boil. Simmer for an hour. Add four tablespoons glaze. Put all through a sieve. Heat gently. Add the liaison of eggs and cream. Serve with croutons made of brown bread. See page 103. This soup can be made with German black bread, cauliflower cream, one quart chicken stock, one cup cooked cauliflower, two yolks of eggs, half pint cream, one cup button mushrooms. Put the cauliflower through a fine sieve, add it to the boiling stock, season, add the liaison of cream and egg. Place the cooked mushrooms at the bottom of a soup tureen. Pour the soup over them. Cream of rice with parmesan. Quarter pound Carolina rice. One quart chicken stock. One gill cream. Half ounce parmesan. Two yolks of eggs. Wash the rice. Boil it for 10 minutes in water. Drain. Add to the stock. Simmer until the rice is tender. Put through a fine sieve. Add to the stock. Mix in the cheese. Add the liaison of cream and eggs. See page 50. Quenelles of chicken, see page 105, can be added if desired, or rice balls, see page 107. Cucumber soup. One cucumber, one and a half pints white stock, one ounce butter, one onion, small handful of sorrel, a little chervil, one gill of cream, two eggs. Cut the cucumber into thin slices, sprinkle salt over them, leave them for an hour, drain, put them in a saucepan with the butter, the onion, chervil, and sorrel, finely minced. Add the stock, season, simmer for 20 minutes. Add the liaison of cream and eggs and serve. Dutch soup. Two carrots, two turnips, one cucumber, one quart chicken or veal broth, yolks of three eggs, one gill of cream, teaspoonful butter, one gill cooked French beans, one gill cooked young peas. Cut the carrots turnip and cucumber into olive-shaped pieces. Blanch for three minutes in boiling water. Add to the stock and simmer until the vegetables are tender. Take off the fire. Season. Add the yolks and cream and butter in small pieces. Stir over the fire until the soup thickens. Put the freshly cooked peas and beans, cut into dice, into the soup tureen Pour the soup over them. Flemish soup. One quart veal stock. One handful spinach and sorrel. Half pint cream. Three yolks of eggs. 
Boil the chopped spinach and sorrel in the stock until tender. Season. Just before serving, add the liaison of eggs and cream. Stir continually until it thickens. Serve with croutons. Page 103. Friar's Chicken. One quart veal stock, one chicken, three yolks of eggs, one pint cream or milk, two tablespoons chopped parsley. Cut the chicken into joints, scald and skin them. Add them to the stock. Season. Bring to the boil. Simmer gently for an hour. Skim from time to time. Strain. Add the liaison of egg and cream and the parsley. Italian Macaroni Soup 1. 5 ounces macaroni, 2 ounces butter, 1 quart white stock, half pint cream or milk, 3 yolks of eggs, 1 ounce grated parmesan. Cut the macaroni in boiling water, adding butter, salt and pepper. Boil for half an hour. Drain. Cut in half inch lengths. Heat the white stock. Add the macaroni to it. Simmer another half hour. Add liaison of eggs and cream or milk and the grated cheese. Macaroni soup two. Half pound macaroni, a little more than one quart chicken stock, about 30 force meat balls, four yolks of eggs, one gill of cream. Boil the macaroni for 10 minutes in cold water. Drain it, cut it in finger lengths. Cook it again for 15 minutes in a little clear chicken stock. In a hot dish, lay first a layer of macaroni, then one small chicken force meat ball, see page 104, then another layer of macaroni, etc. Heat a quart of clear chicken stock to boiling point. Add a liaison of the yolks of four eggs and a gill of cream. Strain. Serve in a soup tureen with a dish of macaroni and force meat balls. Russian soup. Two kidneys, two small onions, quarter pound mushrooms, one dozen small olives, three gherkins, one quart strong stock, yolks of two eggs. Melt the butter and fry the kidneys and onions finely cut up in it very gently for five minutes. Cook the mushrooms separately. Put the kidneys, onions, mushrooms, olives, and gherkins finely sliced in a hot soup tureen. Pour over them a quart of rich, dark, well-seasoned brown stock which has been thickened with the yolks of two eggs. Turkish soup. One quart of veal or beef stock, half a teacup of rice, two yolks of eggs, one tablespoon cream. Boil the rice and the stock together until the rice is tender. Press through a sieve, season, add the yolks and cream. Serve with croutons. Watercress soup. Three potatoes, one handful chopped watercress, one quart stock or water, two yolks of eggs, one tablespoon cream, one ounce butter, one teaspoon white roux. Peel and wash the potatoes. Cook them in a little stock. When tender, mash them and put through a sieve. Add them to the rest of the stock. Put back on the fire. Heat gently. Add a teaspoon of white roux. See page 12. Add the butter in small pieces. Make a liaison of eggs and cream. Stir into the soup. Add the watercress uncooked. Serve at once before the watercress becomes limp. White chicken soup. The water in which a fowl has been boiled. The carcass in the bones of the fowl. One pint milk or cream. One tablespoon chopped onion. Two tablespoons chopped celery. Yolks of two eggs. One gill chopped and cooked carrot and green peas. Add the bones and carcass of the fowl, the onion, celery and seasoning to the water in which a fowl has been boiled. Simmer till reduced to one quart. Strain and thicken with a white roux of butter and flour. Add the liaison of cream or milk 
and eggs. Put the cooked carrot and peas in the soup tureen and pour the soup over them. White veal soup. Two pounds knuckle of veal. One quart water. One onion. Half pint of milk or cream. Two yolks of eggs. One tablespoon butter. One tablespoon flour. Wipe the veal and cut it into small pieces. Cover with cold water and heat slowly, skimming constantly. Season with salt, three or four peppercorns, and a chopped onion. Simmer for three hours until reduced by half. Strain. Allow it to cool. Remove the fat. Put in a stew pan again. And when boiling, thicken with the white roux made of tablespoon butter and a level tablespoon of flour. See page 12. Add a half pint of milk and eggs. Season again. Serve with fried bread. End of section 8. Section number 9 of the Soup and Sauce book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Yasna Jackson. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Vegetable Purees. When passing vegetables or meat through a tammy or fine sieve, it will be easier if they are kept continually moistened with a little of the stock or milk with which the puree is to be made. Purees, having been passed through the sieve or tammy, can, if not required at once, be set aside until wanted. But a puree that has reached this point must on no account be reheated or have milk or cream added to it until just before it is to be served. When reheating, if a meat puree, it should not be allowed to boil or even be made hotter than is absolutely necessary. Allow all vegetable purees to boil up quickly for several minutes after the puree and stock have been mixed. This will clarify them. All scum should be carefully removed. When this is done, the butter and milk or cream can be added. A little white or brown roux well mixed with purees, a minute or two before serving, will prevent the actual puree from separating from the stock. Puree of asparagus. One bundle of asparagus, one handful spinach, one small onion, one quart white stock, half pint milk or cream, one ounce butter. Break off all that is tender of each piece of asparagus. Scrape and wash them. Leave them in cold water for half an hour. Drain them. Put them in a saucepan with a handful of spinach and a small onion. When tender, take all out and drain again. Add to them a quart of white stock. Season. Boil gently for 10 minutes. Put through a tammy. Heat slowly again. Season and add the butter and scalded cream. This soup may be deepened in color by adding a little spinach coloring, page 104, served with croutons, page 103. Puree of black beans. Half pint black beans. One quart water. One carrot, grated. One onion. Half head celery. One tablespoon butter. One tablespoon brown roux. Two ounces raw ham or salt pork. Two cloves one bouquet herbs, one lemon, two hard-boiled eggs, one glass sherry. Soak the beans overnight, drain, put them in a saucepan with one quart cold water, and the ham or pork, the celery, grated carrot, herbs, and cloves pounded. Slice the onion, fry it in the butter, add it to the beans, etc. Simmer for four or five hours. As the water boils, always add cold water, to keep it to the same quantity. Put through a sieve. Return to the fire. Season with salt, pepper, and a little mustard. Stir in a tablespoonful of brown roux. See page 13. Just before serving, add the juice of half a lemon and a glass of sherry. Slice the hard-boiled eggs and half a lemon and put it in the soup tureen. 
pour the soup over it. Force meatballs, page 104, also may be served with this puree. Puree of broad beans. One pint of beans, one slice of bacon or salt pork, two sprigs of parsley, three small onions and one clove, half head of celery, one quart water or stock, half pint milk or cream, one tablespoon butter, one tablespoon flour. Boil the beans, one onion, parsley, celery, and clove in one quart of water or stock until tender. Rub through a sieve into a basin and set aside. Slice and boil two onions until tender. Drain them. Melt the butter in a saucepan. Add the onions and a little nutmeg and fry until a good brown, stirring in the flour and mixing it smooth. Add the boiling milk. Boil for several minutes, stirring all the time. Press through a sieve and add to the puree of beans. Season. Heat gently. Serve with croutons. Puree of carrots. Two large carrots, one large onion, one large turnip, one quart beef stock. Scrape the carrots and slice them finely, using the red outside part only. Slice the other vegetables. Put all together in a saucepan with the stock. Cook until tender. Rub through a sieve. Return to the fire. Season and add a small lump of sugar. Serve with croutons. Puree of endive. Three large endives. One and a half pint chicken stock. One tablespoon white roux. Half a pint cream or milk. Two ounces butter. Discard all but the white parts of the endive. Wash them thoroughly and boil them in salt water for 10 minutes. Drain them and put them to stew very gently for a quarter of an hour with the butter stirring continually. Then add half a pint of white chicken stock and simmer for an hour. Pass through a tammy, return to the fire and add a pint more stock. Let it boil up. Season, add the white roux, page 12, butter and the boiling cream. Color with spinach coloring. See page 104. Puree of green peas, one. One pint of green peas, one turnip, one small onion, one piece of mint, one ounce of butter, one quart brown stock. Stew the vegetables with the butter, one pint of stock, and a little celery seed until they are quite tender. Rub them through a fine sieve or tammy. Return to the fire. Add the rest of the stock. Season and add a lump of sugar and spinach coloring. See page 104. Whenever possible, use half a head of celery, finely chopped, instead of the celery seed. Puree of green peas, two. One pint of peas, two small onions, one cabbage lettuce, one bouquet herbs, one quart stock, one tablespoon white roux, one gill cream. Stew the peas, onion sliced, lettuce and a bouquet of herbs in the butter very gently for 10 minutes. Add to them the hot stock. Bring to the boil. Simmer for half an hour. Pass through a tammy. Reheat gently. Season. Stir in the roux, page 12, and a gill of cream. Serve with croutons or add to the soup some young cooked peas. Puree of Italian dried green peas. Half pint of peas, half head of celery, one and a half pints of stock or water, half pint cream or milk, one tablespoon butter. Soak the peas overnight. Put them in the celery, chopped, on to boil with the water or stock. Boil till very tender. Put through a hair sieve or tammy. Put back on the fire and heat gently. Season. Color with spinach coloring. Just before serving, add the butter in small pieces and when it has melted, the boiling cream. Serve with croutons. See page 103. Puree of lentils. One pint of lentils, one head of celery, one onion, one turnip, one carrot, one slice of ham, three pints stock or water, one gill of cream. Soak the lentils in water overnight. 
Let the vegetables, which should be cut up, and the ham stew gently in the butter for 10 minutes. Strain the lentils from the water they have soaked in. Put them with the ham, vegetables, and stock into a saucepan. Bring to the boil and simmer for two hours. Strain off the liquid. Pound and mash the lentils, etc., and pass them through a sieve. Return them to the liquid. Boil up again. Add a teaspoonful of powdered sugar, seasoning, and the cream scalded. Serve with fried bread. See page 103. Puree of onions. Six onions, one small turnip, half head celery, one quart white stock, two ounces butter, half pint cream or milk, 12 button onions. Cook the large onions, turnip, celery, and butter with the stock until very tender. At the same time, prepare and boil the button onions until soft. Put the vegetables and stock through a fine sieve. Return to the fire. Add the cream or milk, scalded, and the button onions. Season. Puree of rice. Four tablespoons rice, one pint stock, one pint milk or cream, one onion, one carrot, grated, bay leaf, half cup fine breadcrumbs, one ounce butter. Wash and parboil the rice. Add it to the stock with a grated carrot, the sliced onion, which should have been fried a light brown in the butter, and the breadcrumbs. Simmer for half an hour. Pass through a fine sieve. Return to the fire. Add the scalded milk or cream and season. Serve with croutons. See page 103. Puree of turnip. Four turnips, preferably yellow. One large onion. One carrot. One piece of celery. Four ounces butter. One and a half pints stock or water. Half pint milk or cream. Slice the vegetables finely and stew them in the butter. Add half a pint of the stock, hot, and simmer until the vegetables are very tender. Put through a sieve. Add the rest of the stock, heat, season. Just before serving, add the scalded milk or cream. Puree of winter vegetables. One onion, one carrot, one large turnip, half small cabbage, half head of celery, half pint of stewed tomatoes, one quart of water or stock, bouquet of sweet herb, tablespoon butter, one gill cream or milk. Chop all the vegetables, but the cabbage and tomatoes very fine. Put them in a saucepan with the water or stock and boil. Cook the cabbage separately. When the vegetables are tender, add the cabbage. Simmer 10 minutes. Add the tomatoes and a bouquet of herbs. Boil for quarter of an hour. Rub through a sieve. Return to the fire. Season. Add the butter and the cream. End of section 9. Section 10 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Meat Purees, Bisques, Fish Soups. Meat Purees. Whenever a piece of meat or fowl is added to a soup, it must be added as late as possible, and the soup must not be allowed to boil after it has been added, or even made very hot. If it boils, the puree will curdle. Should it by accident do so, it is possible to remedy it by adding a little more stock to the soup, putting it all through a tammy again, and then warming it gently. Puree of fowl a la reine. One large tender fowl. One quarter pound boiled rice. One and a half pints water. Half pint cream. Roast the fowl. Cut off all the meat from it. Chop it and pound it. Break the bones and carcass of the fowl. Put them and the skin in a saucepan with the water. Bring to a boil and simmer for an hour or two. Skim and strain. Add it to the pounded meat. 
pass through a tammy. Add the scalded cream. Season. Puree a fowl a la reine Margot. One fowl. One quart water. Half pint cream. Three ounces pounded almonds. One teacup breadcrumbs. Boil the fowl in a quart of water. When the fowl is tender, take it out and set it aside. Skim the broth and pour it into a basin. Cut all the meat off the fowl. Chop it very fine and pound it. Add to it the breadcrumbs, which must be very finely grated, and the pounded almonds. Put all through a tammy and add to the broth. Season. Add the boiling cream. The yolks of three eggs can also be added if desired. Puree of hair. One small hair. One quart water or consomme. One small bouquet of herbs. Two ounces butter. Two ounces boiled rice. Half pint sauterne. Skin and clean the hair. Cut it up into small pieces. Melt the butter in a large saucepan. Add the pieces of hair to it with a small bouquet of herbs. Fry them a good brown color. Add the water or stock. Bring to the boil. Simmer an hour and a half. Strain off the broth. Cut off all the meat from the hair. Chop and pound it. Add the rice. Dilute with the broth and pass through a tammy. Heat the puree gently when required, adding the sauterne. Season. Serve with fried croutons. Puree of pheasants. One pheasant, one quart stock, three ounces boiled rice, one tablespoon glaze. Roast the pheasant until it is thoroughly done. Cut off all the meat. Set aside the white meat. Put the rest with the bones and stock into a saucepan. Bring to the boil and simmer for an hour. Chop and pound the meat. Add the rice to it. Dilute with the strained stock. Pass through a tammy. Add the tablespoon of glaze. Serve with croutons. Puree of rabbit. One rabbit. One and a half pints water. Two ounces barley or rice, well boiled. Half pint cream. One tablespoon brown roux. Roast the rabbit, seasoning it with salt, pepper, and nutmeg. When it is done, cut off all the meat. Put the bones with the water to make a stock and simmer an hour or two. Skim and strain. Chop the meat and pound it. When the stock is ready, put it with the meat and barley or rice through a tammy. When ready to serve, heat the puree gently and add the roux. Season and add half a pint of scalded cream. Canals of rabbit may be served with this puree. Bisques Crab bisque One large crab, one and a half pints white stock, breadcrumbs or rice, two yolks of hard-boiled eggs, half pint cream, one glass white wine, sautern or rhenish. Take out all the meat, setting that from the claws aside. Pound the rest of the meat with the pulpy part. Add to it about half its weight in fine breadcrumbs or boiled rice and the yolks. Dilute with the stock. Rub through a tammy. Heat very gently, taking care that it does not boil. Season with salt and cayenne. Add half a pint of boiling cream and, if desired, a glass of white wine and the shredded meat from the claws. Lobster bisque. One hen lobster. One and a half pints white stock. Half head of celery. Two ounces butter. Half pint cream or white wine. Sautern or rhenish. Remove the meat from a hen lobster. Set aside the coral and dry it. Cut up the meat into very fine shreds and fry them for five minutes in the butter with the chopped celery and pepper and salt. Add the stock and boil for half an hour. Drain off the stock. Pound the meat and pass it through a tammy. When required, return the stock and puree to the fire. Heat gently and stir continually. 
stir in the coral, which should have been rubbed through a very fine sieve when dry. Season and add a few drops of lemon juice, the scalded cream, or half a pint of hot white wine. Do not allow the bisque to boil. Oyster bisque. One pint oysters, one pint stock, one pint milk, one gill cream, one blade mace, nutmeg, four ounces butter. Boil the oysters gently for quarter of an hour in the stock, adding to it one ounce of butter and the spices. Take off the fire and drain. Set aside the stock. Chop the oysters very fine. Melt two ounces of butter and add them to it. Stir in the flour gradually and smoothly. Add the stock and a pint of milk. Boil for ten minutes, stirring continually. Rub through a tammy. Return to the fire. Add a gill of boiling cream and an ounce of butter in small pieces. Stir the bisque until it is melted, but do not allow it to boil. Season. Serve with croutons. Fish soups. Bouillabaisse. About three pounds of fish, two onions, two tablespoons of olive oil, half a lemon, two small tomatoes, one glass white wine, one laurel leaf, four peppercorns, one tablespoon chopped parsley, bread. Wash the fish and cut it across in slices of different sizes. Take a large iron saucepan. Fry the onions with olive oil in it. When they are colored a good brown, add the fish to the saucepan and just cover it with warm water. Add also a laurel leaf, the inside of half a lemon, from which the pips have been removed. Two small tomatoes, peeled and the seeds taken out. Cut in dice and a glass of light white wine, the peppercorns and salt. Make up a big fire. Set the saucepan on it and let the contents boil violently for 12 to 15 minutes. Then add a tablespoon of chopped parsley. Let it continue boiling for a minute. In a warmed soup tureen, put a number of slices of roll or bread. Pour the liquid over them. See that they become thoroughly soaked with it. Add the best of the fish and serve. The best fish to use for bouillabaisse are cod, whiting, mullet, sole, turbot, and langouste. It is absolutely essential that all the fish used should be perfectly fresh. In France, four cloves of garlic would be added with the tomatoes, but this is optional. Fish soup. One pound cod or halibut, one quart milk, one sliced onion, one tablespoon white roux. Cook the fish in boiling salted water until it flakes easily. Drain it. Take away the bones and skin and rub the fish through a sieve. Put the sliced onion in the milk and boil for 10 minutes. Remove the onion. Add the white roux to the milk. Stir till well mixed. Add the fish. Season. Oyster soup. One pint oysters. Half pint water. One pint milk. One gill thick cream. One tablespoon white roux. Cover the oysters with the cold water. After a little while, remove them. Strain the liquor. Put it on to boil and skim. When clear, add the oysters. Let them simmer until their edges ruffle and their bodies grow plump. This should take about five minutes. Take out the oysters, set them where they will keep warm. Add the liquor to the milk, which should be boiling. Add the roux and seasoning. Simmer five minutes. Add the boiling cream. Add the oysters. Salmon soup. Half pound salmon. One quart white stock. Two anchovies. Half head of celery. A piece of parsley. One clove. One gill cream. One tablespoon white roux. Let half a pound of the salmon stew gently with the chopped anchovies in two ounces of butter for 20 minutes, being very careful that it does not brown. Add the stock, the celery, cut fine, parsley, spice, and herbs. Bring to the boil. Add the white roux. 
Simmer for an hour and a half. Put through a tammy. Return to the fire. Add the boiling cream. Season and serve at once. End of section 10. Read by Jennifer Fournier, Sandia Park, New Mexico, November 2022. Section 11 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by James Bleckley. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Broths. Barley Broth. Two pounds lean mutton. One quarter pound barley. Two turnips. Two carrots. One leek or onion. Two tablespoons chopped parsley. Two quarts of water. Trim the mutton and cut it into small, dice-shaped pieces. Put it with the barley in a saucepan. Cover with the water. Bring to a boil. Simmer for two hours, skimming from time to time. Add the vegetables, which should be finely chopped, and the parsley. Season. Simmer for 40 minutes. Chicken broth. One chicken, one quart cold water, one onion, two tablespoons of rice. Clean the chicken. Separate it into joints, removing all skin and fat. Put it into a saucepan and cover with the cold water. Add the onion sliced. Simmer until the chicken is tender. Remove the breast of the chicken from the saucepan. Let the rest continue to simmer until the meat comes clean away from the bones. Strain off the broth. Remove the fat. Take two tablespoons of rice, which has already been washed and soaked for half an hour. Put the broth on the fire again. Add it to the rice. Season. Add the breast of the chicken cut into small pieces. Simmer until the rice is tender. A cup of scalded cream can be added just before serving. Cocky Leaky. One fowl. Two pounds of shin of beef or knuckle of veal. Two quarts of water. Twelve leeks. Skin the fowl and cut it into joints. Put it in a stew pan with the meat, which should not be cut up, and cover with the water. Bring to a boil. Let it simmer for two hours. Skim. Cut off the coarser part of the leeks and cut the best parts into pieces about an inch long. The leeks are improved by being soaked in water for two hours before using. Add to the soup. Simmer for half an hour. Take out the meat and fowl. Cut the breast of the fowl into small pieces and return to the soup. Season. A teacupful of boiled rice can be added if wished. Game Broth Two or three birds, any kind of game. Two quarts of cold water. One whole carrot. One whole turnip. One half teacup chopped white cabbage. Three potatoes sliced. One dozen small onions. One head of celery. Cut the game into small pieces. Cover with two quarts of cold water. Add an onion, two carrots, a turnip, and several pieces of celery. Bring to a boil. Simmer very gently for four hours. Strain off the broth. Choose the best pieces of meat from the game. Cut them up into neat pieces. Add to the broth. Put back on the fire and add a head of celery, very finely sliced a dozen small onions, and three large potatoes cut in slices. Simmer gently for about three-quarters of an hour. Add the cooked, chopped, 
cabbage, and simmer another five minutes. Hotchpotch. Two pounds lean mutton from the neck. Two quarts cold water. One large carrot. One turnip. Two onions. One cabbage. One small cauliflower. One half pint of shelled peas. Cut the mutton into dice-shaped pieces, removing the fat and skin. Put it in a saucepan with the water and bring to the boil. Let it simmer gently for two hours. Skim, season, add all the vegetables finely chopped except the cabbage, of which the heart only should be used and which should be cooked separately. Simmer two or three hours, add the cabbage. Potato Broth The water in which a joint of mutton has been boiled. One ounce ham. One ounce butter. One small onion. Three large potatoes. Reduce the water to one quart. Strain and remove the fat. Chop one ounce of lean ham very fine. Melt an ounce of butter in a saucepan and in it fry the ham and a small sliced onion until a rich brown. Add this to the broth and simmer 30 minutes. Strain, season, pare and slice three large potatoes. Add to the broth, bring to the boil, simmer for 40 minutes. Scotch Broth Two pounds scrag and neck of mutton. One pound best end neck of mutton. Two quarts water. Two carrots. Two turnips. Three small onions or two leeks. Small head of celery. One tablespoon chopped parsley. Three tablespoons barley which has been soaked several hours. Soak the scrag end in cold water for an hour. Remove the skin very carefully and part of the fat. Put on to boil with two quarts of cold water. When it boils, skim it. Set back to simmer for two hours. Strain. Put the strained broth into a saucepan. Add to it the best end of the neck, either in cutlets or using meat only, cut in neat pieces and the barley. Bring to the boil. Simmer two hours. Skim. Add the vegetables cut into small dice-shaped pieces. Season. Simmer till vegetables are tender. Add parsley. Sheep's head broth. One sheep's head. One teacup pearl barley. 2 quarts cold water, 3 onions and 2 cloves, 1 turnip, 1 carrot, bouquet of herbs, glass of white wine, mushroom ketchup. Remove the brains from a sheep's head and clean it. Leave the head in water overnight. The next day, Put the head in a saucepan with water and barley. Bring to a boil. Throw in a little cold water. Skim. Simmer for an hour, stirring from time to time. Add the vegetables, cut up finely, and herbs. Simmer three or four hours until head is tender. Strain off the broth from the head. Put the vegetables through a sieve and add to the broth. Let it stand till cold. Remove the fat. Take the best of the meat from the head. Cut it into small pieces. Put them with the broth in a saucepan. Heat gently. Add a wine glass of white wine and a little mushroom ketchup just before serving. End of section 11. Section 12 of the Soup and Sauce Book. 
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by James Bleckley. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Broths and Soups for Invalids. It is essential in making invalid soups that the meat used should be uncooked and very good. For beef tea, use steak or shin of beef. Every piece of skin, membrane, and fat should be carefully removed from the meat to be used. Vegetables, spice, and seasoning should not be used unless permitted by the doctor. When soup has to be made quickly, a little time can be saved by removing the fat from it while it is still hot. See page 3. Beef Essence Cut up a lean piece of juicy rump steak into small pieces. Put these into a closely covered jar without any water. Stand the jar in a large saucepan containing cold water. Heat slowly and keep just below boiling point. When the meat in the jar is white, it is done. This should be in about two hours. Strain off the juice, pressing the meat while doing so in order that none may be left in it. Season with a little salt. Or, place the meat in a closely covered jar in a moderate oven, leaving it there for three hours. Strain as above. In both cases, the essence should be kept in a cold place. It must not be boiled when it's heated. It can be made into beef tea by adding boiling water to it. Beef tea the first. One pound very juicy rump steak or shin of beef. One cup cold water. Cut the meat into very small pieces. Put these in a bowl and cover with a cup of cold water. Cover the basin and leave for three or four hours. Then, squeezing the meat firmly, drain off all the liquid. Strain this, add a little salt, and when required, heat very gently. It is best to do this in a bain marie, as it curdles easily. See page 110. Add another cup of cold water to the meat, and proceed as for the first cup. Beef tea, the second. One pound steak or shin of beef. Two pints water. Cut the meat, which must be lean and juicy, into small pieces. Put them into a stew pan and cover with a quart of water. Heat very gently. Skim whenever necessary. Simmer for a little more than an hour. Strain through muslin into a basin. Let it stand until cool. Remove the fat. Pour off the clear beef tea very gently from the dregs. Beef tea the third. Four pounds of steak or shin of beef. Two pounds bones. Two quarts cold water. Break and crush the bones. Cut the meat into small pieces. Put into a stew pan and cover with the cold water. Heat very slowly. Simmer for three hours. Add a little salt. Strain into a basin. Allow it to cool. Remove any fat very carefully. Pour off the clear liquid carefully from the dregs. If allowed, a little carrot and celery may be cooked with the beef tea. Calves foot broth or jelly. Two calves feet, two quarts cold water, two tablespoons sugar, juice of half a lemon, glass of good white wine. Scald and clean the feet, split and break them. Put into a stew pan and cover with two quarts of cold water. Heat very slowly and simmer until reduced to about a pint and a half. Strain. When cold, remove the fat. 
add sugar and lemon juice. Return to the fire. Let it boil for five minutes, stirring continually. Skim thoroughly. Add the wine. Strain through a jelly bag and keep in a cold place. In making broth, the wine may be omitted, and in its place the beaten yolk of an egg added, in which case it will only be necessary to strain it instead of passing it through a jelly bag. Sago or tapioca, which has been boiled till tender, should be added. Chicken broth. One chicken, one quart of cold water, juice of a lemon, boiled rice or vermicelli. Cut up a chicken into small pieces. Remove the meat from the bones as much as possible. Crush the bones. Cover meat and bones with a quart of water. Heat very slowly. Simmer until perfectly tender. When tender, strain off the liquid. Let it get cool. Remove the fat. Heat again, adding a little salt and a few drops of lemon juice. Allow the broth to boil for five minutes. Strain through a napkin. Add a little well-boiled rice or vermicelli, and a little of the white meat of the chicken cut in dice. Chicken custard. One chicken. Three pints of cold water. Two yolks of eggs. Clean, skin, and cut up a young chicken. Put it into a stew pan with about three pints of cold water. Heat very slowly. Skim carefully when it boils. Allow it to simmer for an hour. Strain off the liquid through a napkin. To each half pint of broth, add the yolks of two eggs. Put in a double boiler and stir until it thickens. See page 50. Serve at once. Chicken panada. One chicken, one French roll, one quart cold water. Skin a chicken and boil it gently until tender. Remove it from the liquid and let it cool. Then cut off the white meat. Pound it in a mortar. Mix it with the crumb of a French roll that has been soaked in broth. Add a little of the broth the chicken was boiled in. Pass through a tammy. Dilute with broth. Salt. Heat gently, but do not allow it to boil. A tablespoon of well-boiled rice may be substituted for the crumb of a French roll. Game panada. Game panada is made in exactly the same way as chicken panada, substituting a pheasant or a couple of partridges for the chicken. Chicken tea. One chicken, one quart cold water. Skim a chicken and divide it into pieces. Put it in a stew pan and cover with one quart of water. Simmer gently for a full hour. Strain. Allow it to cool. Remove the fat. Serve hot or cold. Mutton broth. One pound lean mutton. One pint cold water. Two tablespoons boiled rice. Chop the mutton very fine. Put it in a stew pan with one pint of cold water. Put it in a basin and cover with the water. Cover the basin. Let it stand for an hour. Then heat very gently. Simmer for quarter of an hour. Strain. Remove the fat. Add the well-boiled rice. Veal broth. A knuckle of veal. A chicken. Two quarts of water. Two tablespoons well-boiled rice. Put a knuckle of veal and a chicken, an old one will do, into a large stew pan. Cover with two quarts of water. Let it boil up gently. Skim. Simmer for three hours. Strain through a napkin. Allow it to cool. Remove the fat. Serve with a little boiled rice. 
end of section 12. Section 13 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Jeff Novak. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Accessories Croutons, several slices of stale bread, one ounce of butter. Cut off the crust and cut the bread into small, dice shaped pieces. Fry them in the butter, drain them on a sieve. Before serving, put them for a few minutes in a quick oven. Custards for clear soup. Four yolks of eggs, one gill consomme or water. Beat the yolks in a basin, stir in the consomme or water. Add a little salt, strain through a hair sieve into a shallow mold. Steam it until well set. Let it become quite cold. Put out on a wet cloth. Cut in squares or fancy shapes. Part of the custard may be colored green with spinach coloring. Force meatballs. One cup of meat of any kind. One teaspoon finely chopped parsley, one salt spoon thyme, one teaspoon lemon juice, one yolk of egg raw, one tablespoon flour, one tablespoon butter. Chop the meat very fine, season it highly, and add the lemon juice, thyme, and parsley. Moisten with the yolk of egg, roll into small balls, flour them well, melt the butter in a shallow pan. When it is brown, add the balls. Fry until brown. Green coloring. Pound some spinach in a mortar and put it through a hair sieve. Put the juice in a saucepan and boil it until it curdles. Put through a very fine sieve. Bottle. Potato balls. For potato or clear soups. Two potatoes. One ounce butter. One tablespoon thick cream. One egg. Boil the potatoes, rub them through a sieve, put them in a saucepan with the butter and cream. Season. Stir over a good fire until of a stiff consistency. Remove from the fire and put in a basin. Add the yolk of an egg and the beaten white. Form into small balls. Drop into boiling water. Boil two or three minutes. Canals of chicken, game, hare, or rabbit. 4 ounces meat, 2 ounces breadcrumbs, 2 ounces butter, 1 whole egg, and 1 extra yolk. Chop and pound the meat. Soak the breadcrumbs in a little milk or broth. Mix all thoroughly together. Season. Pass through a sieve. Form into balls. Drop into boiling water or broth and simmer for 3 minutes. The best meat should always be reserved for making canals. Canals of marrow. Four ounces marrow. Four ounces fine breadcrumbs. One egg. Half teaspoonful finely chopped parsley. Mix all the ingredients thoroughly. Season. Roll in the hand in small balls. Boil in a little broth for 15 minutes. Rice. One cup of Carolina rice. Two quarts boiling water. One tablespoon salt. Wash a cup of rice thoroughly. Drain it. Throw it into a large saucepan of salted boiling water and let it boil as fast as possible for 20 minutes. Do not stir. Drain. Put it into cold water for 10 minutes. Drain again. When required, warm it by steaming or set it in the oven, leaving the door open. Savory rice. To serve with clear soup. Prepare the rice as above. Add to it one cup of rich stock, which has been highly seasoned. Steam to warm. Add a tablespoon of butter just before serving. Or add a tablespoon of chopped onion, which has been fried a rich yellow, in a tablespoon of butter to the cooked rice. Moisten with a cup of stock and steam for 10 minutes. Rice balls. For cream of rice or clear soups. Quarter pound Carolina rice. 1 ounce butter, 1 ounce grated parmesan, 2 yolks of eggs, 1 whole egg, 
Boil the rice until quite soft. Drain it. Put it in a saucepan with the butter, cheese, and yolks. Stir continually for five minutes. Season. Take off the fire. Turn out of the saucepan to cool. When cold, make into small balls. Beat the whole egg. Roll the balls first in a little flour, then in the egg. Fry in very hot lard till a rich yellow. End of section 13. Read by Jeff Novak, Kimberly, Wisconsin. November 15th, 2022. Section 14 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Hot Sauces for Fish. Black Butter for Skate Grilled Mackerel. One gill vinegar, four ounces butter, several small parsley leaves, small piece of bay leaf. Boil the vinegar with the bay leaf until it is considerably reduced. Heat the butter in a pan until it becomes brown. Add the parsley leaves, let them fry for a moment. Skim the butter. Remove the bay leaf from the vinegar, add a little salt and pepper. Pour the butter and parsley leaves into it, mix and serve. Dutch sauce. Butter, size of an egg. One teaspoon flour, one half pint milk or cream, juice of half a lemon, two yolks of eggs. Melt the butter in a saucepan. Stir in the flour and mix till perfectly smooth. Add the milk or cream. Boil for two or three minutes. Add lemon juice and just before serving, stir in the two yolks, after which do not allow the sauce to boil. Genoese sauce for fillet of sole. One ounce butter, two tablespoons olive oil, two yolks of eggs, one tablespoon vinegar. Put the oil and butter into a saucepan on the fire and stir till the butter is melted. Beat the yolks slightly. Add the vinegar to them. Season. Directly the butter is melted, add the yolks and vinegar, stirring continually over a bain-marie until the sauce thickens. Half a teaspoonful of mustard may be added. Italian sauce for mackerel, etc. Two tablespoons olive oil, one ounce butter, six chopped mushrooms, one shallot finely chopped, one teaspoon chopped parsley, one clove, one wine glass white wine, ten drops Liebig's extract of meat. Put the butter and oil in a saucepan. Add the mushrooms, shallot, parsley, and the clove. Cook for a few minutes. Add the wine and Liebig. Simmer gently for 40 minutes. Season. Pass through a sieve. Maitre d'hôtel. Four ounces butter, one half pint milk, one teaspoon flour, one dessert spoon finely chopped parsley, juice of a lemon. Mix the flour and butter together till smooth. Melt in a saucepan. Add the boiling milk. Let all boil for three or four minutes, stirring constantly. Add the parsley and lemon juice. Melted butter. One teaspoon flour, four ounces butter, one gill boiling milk or water. Mix the flour and butter thoroughly in a basin. When perfectly smooth, put in a saucepan. Add to it the boiling milk or water. Let it boil for two or three minutes. Stir continually from left to right. Season. To this sauce the raw yolk of an egg or finely chopped hard-boiled egg, shrimps, a little essence of anchovy, or a tablespoon of grated cucumber may be added. When it becomes egg, shrimp, anchovy, or cucumber sauce. To the cucumber sauce, add a teaspoonful of lemon juice. Oyster sauce. Two dozen oysters, three ounces butter, one teaspoon flour, one half pint cream, one coffee spoon lemon juice. Prepare the oysters and stew them in their own juice and the butter until plump and tender. Mix the flour with the cream until perfectly smooth. Bring to the boil and let it boil two or three minutes. Add it to the oysters, etc. Stir quickly together. Season with salt, a little cayenne, and the lemon juice. Sauce Hollandaise. Four tablespoons vinegar, one blade mace, one teaspoon flour, yolks of four eggs, three ounces butter. Season the vinegar, add to it the flour, and mix perfectly smooth. Add the mace. Bring to the boil and boil for two or three minutes. Take off the fire and take out the mace. Add the butter cut in small pieces and the well-beaten yolks. Stir continually in one direction 
over a bain-marie. Serve directly the butter is melted. End of section 14. Section 15 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Hot sauces for roasts, steaks, cutlets, etc. Brown sauce or collis. Three pounds lean veal. One pound raw lean ham. One ounce butter. Six mushrooms chopped. One carrot chopped. One onion chopped. Rind of a lemon. Small bouquet of herbs. One teaspoon allspice. One quart brown stock. Fourth pound brown roux. Slice the veal and ham. Add the vegetables, spice, lemon rind, and herbs, and brown slightly in a saucepan with butter. Add the stock and brown roux. Boil ten minutes. Stir continually. Put through a tammy. Cucumber sauce. One cucumber. Two tablespoons brown stock. One ounce butter. One tablespoon chopped parsley. Juice of half a lemon, half pint brown sauce. Peel and split the cucumber lengthwise into four pieces. Take out the seeds. Cut in small pieces. Put into salted water and boil gently for seven minutes. Take off and drain. Melt the butter and add it to the stock, cucumber, and parsley. Cook gently for half an hour. Add the brown sauce. And lemon juice. Dutch horseradish sauce for roast beef or steak. One teacup horseradish, half pint water, three ounces butter, three tablespoons flour, one gill cream, four yolks of eggs, three tablespoons elder vinegar. Scrape the horseradish very finely and boil it for ten minutes in water. Drain off the water. Cook the horseradish with the butter and flour for four minutes. Add the water in which the horseradish was boiled, stirring continually. Heat. Take off the fire. Add the hot cream and then the beaten yolks. Beat well together. Add pepper, salt, and vinegar. Maitre d' de Hotel. 1. 2 ounces butter, 1 tablespoon chopped parsley, juice of half a lemon, melt the butter, skim it, add the parsley, and, if liked, a little finely chopped shallot, salt, pepper, and lemon juice. Maitre d' de Hotel, 2. 4 shallots, 1 teaspoon chopped parsley, one teaspoon chopped fennel, one dozen mushrooms, two ounces butter, half pint brown sauce or bechamel. Chop the shallots, put them with the parsley, fennel, and mushrooms into a saucepan in which the butter has been melted. Cook gently for five minutes. Add the brown sauce or bechamel. Boil ten minutes. Season and add a squeeze of lemon juice. Mushroom sauce, two dozen small mushrooms, one ounce butter, one tablespoon flour, one pint good gravy, half a lemon. Cook the mushrooms in the butter until brown and tender. Add the flour, stir well in, and brown. Pour the gravy over the mushrooms. Boil three minutes. Season and add a little lemon juice. Onion sauce for roast mutton. Four onions, half pint melted butter. Slice and chop the onions finely. Boil until tender. Drain and add to the hot melted butter. Season. If preferred, the onion can be first passed through a fine sieve and then added to the melted butter. Sauce Bernays. Five yolks of eggs. 
two ounces butter, one tablespoon chopped tarragon, one dessert spoon vinegar. Put the yolks in a saucepan. In a bain marie, stir into them one ounce of butter. As soon as the eggs begin to thicken, take off the fire. Add another ounce of butter, the tarragon, and vinegar. This sauce should be the consistency of a mayonnaise. Serve with roast meats. Sauce for chops or steak. Two tablespoons red wine. Two tablespoons ketchup. One teaspoon butter. One teaspoon vinegar. Stir all together in a saucepan. Season and serve very hot. Sauce piquante au citron for calf's head. Two tablespoons chopped onions. One ounce butter. One tablespoon flour. One gill white stock. One gill white wine. One lemon. Fry the onion and the butter with the flour until a rich yellow. Add it to the stock, which should be boiling, and add the wine. Stir together. Add the juice of the lemon and a little of the grated rind. Simmer for quarter of an hour. Strain through a fine sieve. Sauce Robert for pork. Three onions. One gill rich brown gravy. One teaspoon made mustard. One teaspoon vinegar. Two ounces butter. One tablespoon flour. Chop the onions. Fry them in the butter. Add the flour. Mix quite smooth. Add the gravy, salt, and pepper. Simmer for half an hour. Skim. Add the mustard and vinegar. Serve with pork. Sauce vinaigrette. Four tablespoons vinegar. One bay leaf. One tablespoon brown sauce. One tablespoon chopped shallots. Two tablespoons chopped gherkins. One tablespoon capers. One tablespoon chopped parsley. One ounce butter. Boil the vinegar for quarter of an hour with the bay leaf. Add the sauce. Simmer five minutes. Remove the bay leaf. Add the shallots, which should have been previously cooked in the butter and allowed to drain upon a sieve. Capers, gherkins, and parsley. Tomato sauce. Six tomatoes. Half an onion, chopped. One clove. One slice of ham. One gill rich brown gravy. One tablespoon brown roux. Remove the seeds from the tomatoes. Stew them with the onion, ham, and clove in an enamel saucepan until well cooked. Rub through a tammy. Return to the saucepan. Add the gravy and brown roux. Simmer for quarter of an hour. End of section 15. Section 16 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Hot Sauces for Fowls, Ducks, Rabbits, etc. Apple Sauce. Set the required quantity of sour apples pared, cored, and sliced in a small pan inside a large saucepan containing boiling water. Let the water boil quickly until the apples are done. Mash them and add sugar to taste. Or, pare, quarter, and remove the core of several sour apples. Put them in a saucepan with a little water. Boil up quickly. Do not stir until cooked. Then add sugar and mash. Bechamel one pound veal, two slices ham, two pints water, one fourth pound mushrooms, one onion, bouquet of herbs, five tablespoons white roux, one pint of cream. Slice the veal, ham, mushrooms, and onion and stew them gently for an hour and a half in the water. Thicken them with the roux, see page 12. Add the cream, 
Boil for two or three minutes, stirring continually. Strain. Bread sauce. One half pint milk, one teacup bread crumbs, one onion, two peppercorns, one teaspoon butter. Slice the onion and boil it in the milk with the peppercorns until very tender. Strain off the milk and add it to the bread crumbs, which should be made from stale bread and be very finely grated. Allow the sauce to stand covered for a few minutes. Add the butter, stir in thoroughly. Season and serve very hot. Celery sauce. One large head of celery, one half pint milk or cream, one tablespoon white roux. Use the best of the celery only, cut it in small pieces, cook it in water until very tender. Put through a sieve, add it to the cream or milk, thicken with a small tablespoon white roux, see page 12, season. Gooseberry sauce for duckling or goose. One gill spinach juice, one half pint stock, one half pint gooseberries, one tablespoon sugar, one teaspoon butter. Cook the gooseberries till tender, rub them through a sieve, put them in a saucepan on the fire, add the sugar, more if preferred, and butter. When thoroughly mixed, add the stock with which the spinach juice, see page 104, has been mixed. Make very hot. Lemon sauce for rabbit or fowl. One lemon, one liver of fowl or rabbit, one half pint melted butter, one tablespoon chopped parsley. Cook the liver, pound it, and put it through a sieve. Peel the lemon, cut the inside from which the pips must be removed into very small dice-shaped pieces. Add the lemon and liver to the melted butter. Heat gently, but do not boil. Add the parsley. Parsley sauce. Small bunch of parsley, one half pint melted butter. Boil the parsley for five minutes, drain, chop finely, add to the melted butter. Or, to one gill of water in which a fowl has been boiled, add one gill of cream, one dessert spoon white roux, see page 12, seasoning and the boiled and chopped parsley. Sous a la Reine. One half pint veal stock, one fourth pound mushrooms, small bouquet of herbs, one half an onion, one half pint cream, breast of a fowl, juice of half a lemon, one teaspoon flour. Let the veal stock simmer for half an hour with the mushrooms, onions, and herbs. Then strain. Thicken with the flour. Boil two or three minutes. Add the boiling cream. Set back on the fire and add the finely pounded breast, lemon juice, and seasoning. Do not allow the sauce to boil after the chicken has been added. White sauce, one gill veal or chicken stock, one gill cream, juice of half a lemon, juice of half a Seville orange. Mix all together, heat gently, stirring continually. Season. End of section 16, read by Bryce Cries, Youngstown. Section 17 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Hot Sauces for Game, etc. Cream Sauce. The Gravy from Two Roasted Birds. One gill cream. Stir the cream into gravy of the birds with which it is to be served. Season. Add a few drops of lemon. Game sauce. Two onions. A bouquet of thyme, bay leaf, and parsley. Several pieces of game. One slice of ham. One ounce of butter. Four tablespoons of mandara. One half pint brown sauce, see page 118. Cut the onions, ham, and game into small pieces. Add them to the bouquet. Fry them gently in the butter. Add the mandara. Simmer 20 minutes. 
Add the sauce and simmer 10 minutes. Pass through a sieve. German sauce. One half pint rich brown stock. One teaspoon glaze. Pheasant bones. 12 mushrooms. One glass white wine. Break the pheasant bones. Add them to the stock. Simmer half an hour. Add the mushrooms. Simmer till tender. Put through a sieve. Add glaze, seasoning, and glass of wine. Mandara sauce. One half onion. One half carrot. One bay leaf. Two cloves. One slice ham. One gill brown stock or gravy. One half pint brown sauce. See page 118. One glass mandara. Cayenne. Juice of half a lemon. Slice the onion and carrot. Put them with the bay leaf, clove, and the ham, cut in small pieces, in a saucepan. Cover with the brown stock. Boil up quickly. Simmer half an hour. Season. Add mandara, brown sauce, and lemon juice. Rub through a fine sieve. Color with caramel coloring. See page 13 if not dark enough, and stir in the butter. Orange sauce. Two Seville oranges. One half lemon. One glass red wine. One gill brown gravy. One lump of sugar. Grate the yellow part of the skin of one orange very finely. Add it to the brown gravy. Simmer a few minutes. Add the wine, the juice of two oranges, and half a lemon a little cayenne, and the sugar. Serve with game or wild duck. Sauce poivrade. One ounce butter. Two onions. One carrot. Two cloves. One bay leaf. One teaspoon flour. One glass red wine. One glass water. One tablespoon vinegar. Melt the butter. Add the onions and carrots sliced the cloves, bay leaf, and flour. Cook until a good brown, then add the wine, water, and vinegar. Boil half an hour. Strain. Season with salt and the whole pepper. Serve with game. Sour cream sauce. Two ounces butter. Two yolks of egg. One tablespoon flour. One gill sour cream. One gill brown stock a little nutmeg, a few drops of lemon juice. Cook the butter and flour together, but do not brown. Take off the fire and add the yolks. When thoroughly mixed, add the cream and stock, salt, nutmeg, and lemon. Heat, but do not boil. Pass through a tammy. Heat again without boiling. End of section 17. Section 18 of the Soup and Sauce Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas. Cold Sauces. Anchovy butter. 4 ounces anchovies. 6 ounces butter. Wash and dry the anchovies. Pound them and put them through a sieve. Beat the butter to a cream and add it to the anchovies. Horseradish sauce. Two tablespoons grated horseradish. One teaspoon mustard. One dessert spoon sugar. One tablespoon vinegar. Two tablespoons thick cream. It is essential in making this sauce that the horseradish should be grated as fine as possible. Mix all together adding the vinegar slowly, and the cream last of all. Mayonnaise sauce, one or two raw yolks of egg, olive oil, vinegar. Put the yolk into a bowl and beat it slightly. Add the oil drop by drop, stirring continually in one direction and working it well against the sides of the bowl. When the sauce becomes thick, the oil may be added more quickly. Continue adding oil until sufficient sauce has been made. Add vinegar, salt, pepper to taste. This sauce should be made in a cold place 
and will take about 15 minutes to make. Finely chopped tarragon, chervil, and olives may be added to the mayonnaise. Mint sauce. One handful of mint, chopped. One gill, vinegar. Two tablespoons powdered or brown sugar. Melt the sugar in the vinegar. Chop the mint very fine. It cannot be too fine. Add it to the vinegar. Sauce for cold fish. Four anchovies. Three yolks, hard-boiled. Two yolks, raw. One teaspoon mustard. Oil, vinegar, a little smoked salmon. Clean, bone, and pound the anchovies with the hard-boiled eggs. Add the mustard and raw yolks, stirring all the time. Add vinegar and oil until you have a sufficient quantity of the sauce. Using three times as much oil as vinegar and stirring continually, always in the same direction. Add salt, pepper, and a little shredded smoked salmon. Sauce Gaylord Two hard-boiled eggs, two gherkins, four small pickled onions, a little tarragon and chervil, oil, vinegar. Crush the yolks and add them to the whites, gherkins, onions, tarragon, and chervil finely chopped. Add oil very slowly, turning continually from left to right until the quantity of sauce required has been made. Add one or two tablespoons of vinegar, salt, pepper, and a little mustard. Sauce Moutard Two hard-boiled yolks Two tablespoons olive oil, three tablespoons vinegar, one tablespoon mustard, one small handful tarragon. Crush the yolks and add them to the oil, salt, pepper, vinegar, and mustard. Stir well together. Chop the tarragon very finely. Add it to the sauce. Sauce Ravigot. Two hard-boiled yolks, two raw yolks, one dessert spoon mustard. Tarragon, shallot, parsley, chives, capers, gherkins, oil, vinegar. Pound and pass the hard-boiled yolks through a sieve. Mix them thoroughly with the raw yolk and mustard. Add oil, as for mayonnaise, until the required quantity is made. Season. Add vinegar to taste and a little very finely chopped tarragon, shallot, parsley, and chives. Just before serving, add a tablespoon capers and chopped gherkins. Sauce remoulade. One hard-boiled yolk, one raw yolk, one coffee spoon mustard, one large tablespoon chopped shallots, parsley and chervil, oil, vinegar. Put the hard-boiled and the raw yolk with the mustard into a basin. Mix thoroughly with a wooden spoon. Add the oil very slowly, stirring continually in one direction. The quantity of oil used depends on the quantity of sauce required. Add a large tablespoon of finely chopped parsley, chervil, and shallots. Add very little vinegar, salt, and pepper. End of section 18 End of the Soup and Sauce Book by Elizabeth Douglas